first question I want to ask is based on, on the survey that we did, uh, in which I think 75% of the respondents said that the Czech Republic, uh, people of the Czech Republic, uh, tend to have a lower lower trust levels uh, than people in other countries. One, do you believe it's true? And if you do believe it's true, how does it change uh, the way that you manage people and relationships? So I'm not sure that people in Czech uh, have lower level of trust than mm -hmm. in other countries. What my experience is maybe uh, Czech people don't want to commit or promise something they are not sure they can deliver, mm -hmm. uh, which is which I can see as a big difference uh, compared to other nations. Uh, yeah. So we are not so enthusiastic uh, as the others sure. before we are sure that we can deliver what we promised or committed. And so how does that change? Because you know the, the big management tools are always these stretch targets and, and really challenging people to perform beyond what they thought their capacity was. So how do you, can you do that here or do you have to have a different way of setting targets for people? Uh, I think at the, in, in global companies as, as we are, mm -hmm. uh, setting targets is the, the, the same procedure as uh, in other countries. So we permanently set uh, the stretch targets. Uh, mm -hmm. And how do people respond to that? Because uh, setting yeah. stretch targets mean that they're not certain they're going to be able to reach them. Uh, yeah, I think that they are, as I don't know if in other countries they feel comfortable with stretch targets. Mm -hmm. I think that people don't feel com comfortable uh, at all. But uh, what important is, and what I try to uh, build in people, is their, their self confidence mm -hmm. that they, in their capacity, is to perform well. Mm -hmm. And based on the previous years, not only one year, but years results, uh, to, to feel that they should be able to uh, extend their, uh, mm -hmm. their capacity and, and extend their plans. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that we succeeded. So I think that uh, with the feeling that uh, they already succeeded mm -hmm. and uh, relying on strengths, uh, characters uh, mm -hmm. people have, and relying on the rest of the team supporting them in their activities, uh, they were able to perform and, and uh, achieve plans and, and extend. Uh, plans. And, uh, and what do you think is the most important uh, tool or technique to build trust inside an organization? I wouldn't say that it is just one simple thing. Mm -hmm. I think it is a number of uh, activities, initiatives, uh, behavior, management behavior, not only just one manager, but of course it starts uh, from a leader of, of the organization, uh, that uh, there must be some level of openness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, open communication, uh, open access to management, uh, responsiveness to, uh, to people needs. Uh, and uh, this has to be uh, populated through the whole c company, mm -hmm. not only uh, at the management level, but through all people. Uh, I think that uh, it is also important to, uh, and this was our uh, approach or my own approach, that uh, people should understand that uh, except the professional task and, and, uh, and role, to, to sell or to, to deli deliver something to the customer, to provide service. It's also to, they are responsible for creating a motivating environment, open environment, communi good communication, keep good communication with the other colleagues. And I would say that this is 50-50 because uh, if you are only a good performer, focused on your own task, but uh, not caring about the rest of the team or of the team spirit. Uh, it's just short term, uh, it brings short term result, but not uh, longer, longer term result. And how much time do you spend talking with, with your, with your um, fellow staff members about just this, creating teamwork, creating trust between other people, being responsible not only for your targets, but helping other people achieve their targets? Uh, 
I wouldn't say I do it. I am doing it regular, uh, intentionally. Yeah. I'm doing it uh, in case I feel or I see that something is not going well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am all, all the time. I am highlighting the need of, of uh, good communication. Uh, but of course, we have some regular activities which are uh, repeated. For example, once a uh, once a year, twice a year, uh, for providing feedback to people, open communication, uh, discussing this uh, soft soft skill uh, areas, and uh, yes, and and they have uh, also possibility. I, I applied uh, this open door policy in, in my organization, so. Each employee, each employee, not just my management team, but each employee have possibility has possibility to come to my office. And do they use and, it? Uh, yes, in some cases, yes. I was afraid a little bit at the beginning that uh, people might misuse it, mm -hmm. but my experience is positive. They they are not uh, misusing it. Uh, they use it just really in in serious cases, but but not not in uh, not, not all the time. Some other people have told me that when they do these feedback sessions, like the 360 feedback and, and asking uh, people within a team or a business unit to comment on the performance uh, of other people, that it's very difficult to get people to speak truthfully, mm -hmm. to be critical, um, especially in sort of the essential capacities of people to do the work and, and be a part of the team. Have you found that to be true? And if you have, how how can you get people to be more truthful and more open and discussing the work of their peers? I think it, it needs time. Uh, first of all, people need to learn that uh, they are not punished uh, later on after they are speaking openly. And also my experience is that uh, we organized many times, uh, we call it brainstorming sessions, uh, pointing or focusing on just one one topic, uh, discussing it uh, in the in the uh, wider uh, wider audience uh, within the whole team, and uh, in, during such discussions, I didn't differentiate who is manager and who is uh, just staff staff member, mm -hmm. and uh, it was interesting to see that at the beginning of the discussion, people seem to be uh, a little bit closed and not, not open communicating but uh, when they saw the communication from the key uh, team members they uh, join us in this discussion more and more and at the end of the discussion we were, for example we had limited time for two hours mm -hmm. so first hour was so-so discussion but during the second part of the discussion every, almost everyone was participating openly and uh, at the end we needed more time to, to discuss uh, because everyone was interested to, to, to talk to. So I, and I think there's a, a character of Czech people that they at the beginning are a little bit closed but once they see the possibility to communicate openly without any punishment or forcing somebody because so I think the, 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 the closed behavior is, is fear of punishment, that's where it comes from. Uh, maybe partially. Uh, partially, it might be that uh, in our culture, in in our education system, for example, and this is one of my concern. Uh, if I talk about edu education system in Czech Republic, is that uh, our education system doesn't motivate people to be uh, to be open and to to negotiate, to discuss openly uh, topics. Because usually, if if you are at a school and you have different opinion than your teacher. You are not well accepted, but you are punished for it. And why is that? Probably historical re uh, historical reasons are here, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is one of the the biggest problems or issue. What I can see now in our education system, that 20 years after revolution, our education, mainly the basic schools and and the secondary schools, are because at university it's a little bit different situation, but uh, the, the basic school. Uh, schools are uh, still in this uh, in this situation, and this is not not uh, positive for uh, for our community development.